So using the same um, tools that we've gone over, we're going to kind of cut these shoes out of their backgrounds. Um, so I'm going to just double click this background layer again. My job is really easy with this one because my whole entire background is white. So um, I'm just going to take my magic wand, click this um, background here, and then just kind of look at what is being selected on the screen. Really hard to see um, right now. Uh, so what I can do in my menu down here is, um, is uh, see a preview of what I have selected and what I have not selected. Uh, with this quick mask, um, uh, with this uh, uh, quick mask button here. Um, so what I'm seeing is the area that's deselected is in pink. I think it's yeah, pinkish orange. Um, the, the area that I have selected is, um, in this case, white, but it would actually be like the color of whatever the um, original image is. So in this case, white. So this gives me a good idea of what I have selected and what I have not selected on the shoe if I'm just not really sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn that off and then I'm going to remember what I saw that I had selected and not selected. Again, I'm trying to get this white background. So I'm holding the shift key on my little wand tool here and you can see the plus sign popping up in and out. Um, so with the uh, shift key held down and my plus sign on, I'm just going to click this uh, uh, white area here. Again, shift click, shift click, shift click, all the way across. I'll turn on my um, quick mask mode, um, preview again, and see that what I have to, what I still have to get done here is this Nike check piece. Um, you know, the tone obviously is, is white and it kind of runs off the back of the shoe and so my pixel selection kind of bled through here. Um, so there's a couple of things that I can do to um, select this area. I'm going to kind of use a combination of the, um, uh, the pen tool, but also the brushes to select. So I have this pen tool here. I'm going to grab that, and I'm just going to just kind of refine this edge and make a selection. And then I'm going to encircle the entire piece right here. And then I'm going to Paths, I'm going to the drop-down, and I'm going to select Make Selection. And I'm going to hit OK. So now I have this selection here that's going to help me um, uh, kind of then select actually this other uh, Nike Check piece. So um, with my brush, hit the key B here. Um, it's either brush or uh, eraser tool that's gonna um, uh, that's gonna help me here. So in this case, if I want to deselect, I can take my brush and I can actually brush over um, uh, the area that I want deselected. So I'm just gonna do a little piece of it and then show you. Um, by turning on and off my my um, a screen here, so you can see now, like wherever I was brushing, you can see it's beginning to deselect that area. Uh, so then I'll go back and then start selecting the rest of it. The reason why I had my pen tool there um, was because as I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to be too careful. I kind of want to select it really fast and and not have such a steady hand. So. I'll, that's why I took my pen tool and I kind of came over this edge here so that I can, when selected, I can just take my brush and arbitrarily just swipe it over there and it's selected. So then I can then turn off my mask layer and then back to having the entire shoe um, uh, selected just the way I want. So now I'm just going to hit layers make sure my shoe um, layer is selected, and then just delete. So I'll now have that piece uh, cut out. Another thing we're going to want to do is separate the shadow from the shoe piece. And it's actually 
a lot easier than it than it sounds and it all depends on what you're using sometimes if the contrast is um, bright enough especially with these types of shoes um, sometimes the cleat is like a bright color and then your shadow of course naturally is dark um, it's easy to just go and get your magnetic lasso tool run it through there run it through there swipe it around you know command cut paste or uh, copy cut paste um, in this case since uh, since the color tone is so close we have the two very dark tones um, black on a shadow um, it's going to take a little bit more work and so my pen tool is going to be the one that that I would choose to to use and just kind of outline it and I don't have to be too careful with um, with any of the uh, areas except for oops excuse me one second I don't have to be too careful um, when I'm not in that sort of cleated area. And so the goal then is to put this on its own layer, the shadow piece. So I then create a new layer, have my shoe layer selected. I'm going to edit copy, edit cut, select my layer that I want my shadow on edit and then if you remember paste special we use paste in place and I'll just put this towards the back so then I'll add a new layer I'll select all on this background layer and I'll fill it with either a texture or a color or uh, something like that whatever my um, layout needs me to do I want to see a color that's going to make it a little more obvious hit OK yellow is good so let's say this oops sorry let's say this is kind of like my um, background um, you can see that the shadow is really clipped looking like it doesn't look very natural at all uh, so the reason why we separated that then is to um, use the multiply layer blending mode um, to actually let those yellow pixels come through and then um, and give it a more a look like it's actually there so I'm just undoing and redoing to show. So like if your background then, this, this yellow that I'm using, if that was like a texture or something, um, whatever texture it may have been, then that shadow could naturally look like it's on top of it. So one of the things that we're going to want to do then is, um, uh, for some of the next steps down the road, is that um, for our shoes. Also, and I'm going to make a duplicate of this, um, we're going to want to uh, color edit these shoes. So I have a copy of that shoe there. Uh, I'm going to go to image adjustments um, and I'm going to actually go to replace color. Um, if I can, there it is. Um, so the replace color uh, tool I haven't shown you. Has anyone see, uh, used the replace color tool in Photoshop before? So the replace color tool, um, I can actually, you see this kind of, my cursor now when I'm in here turns into an eyedropper. Uh, so what I can do is like select um, color tones here um, and you can see the effect here happening uh, on my image. So I think I'll 
let me try uh, to deselect. Yeah, so I can select or deselect color pixel or uh, pixel tone. Um, so I'm going to select this red, and now you're going to see it kind of show up here in white. And this is just kind of a um, precursor to show you what you have selected in this image. So these are the tones, uh, the color tone uh, kind of range that I'm selecting. Um, and this is kind of where it is represented in the image. Um, I can adjust the fuzziness of it so you can see that it's getting more, uh, the, um, those orange pixels um, are getting, uh, I guess, fuzzy is a weird word, like um, it's just increasing or decreasing the intensity of the selection um, there for those related pixels. Um, Either way, what you can do is then hit this little box that says Result, this swatch here. And once you kind of hit that, you can kind of drag your color, um, your color selector around here, like say in this box, if you wanted to change the color of the shoe um, for like a different season or something, and then kind of preview it. So what it's doing is it's actually replacing the existing pixels um, this orange with this blue. Um, so with this fuzziness tool I can just increase the fuzziness to actually it, it's more realistic to see it this way what's happening. It's kind of spreading the selection but it's not going too far into this black area. It's only doing it to this these uh, uh, what you call orange pixels there. Okay, so let's say that I needed a little bit more. I can actually shift and click. I don't know if, I don't know if you saw that. So, I, yeah, it's kind of hard to see on the wall. So down in this corner, I, I still have like a little faded corner of orange. And so if I hold the shift key and then I click on that corner with my eyedropper, it's then going to add my result color there it's going to kind of blend it in so i can continuously add stuff to to it and then if i'm good with it i can just hit okay and so now instead of you know one one shoe style i've got like two now So for a different style, then I can just drag this up, and you know this is just using the same tools we've we've been uh, kind of demoing. Um, essentially, I can just uh, I'll select this whole Nike check piece. Uh, let me make sure that it's not getting too crazy back there. I'll go back into my um, masking mode. I'll turn my eraser tool on. Oh, I'll go back to the brush tool just to refine this selection here just by hand because I want to kind of do it quickly. I don't want to take too long, too long to get this stuff done. I'm going to go up to the image um, adjustments and hue saturation. Um, the reason why I'm doing hue saturation for this Nike check is because um, uh, neutral tones uh, don't work uh, with the um, replace color. Um, feature very well. Um, so blacks or whites or grays uh, don't work uh, that well uh, for that. So um, now at this point I'm just going to hit the colorize button and uh, increase the saturation, maybe uh, decrease the lightness and just kind of change the color of my check uh, to whatever you know I think is like going to sell and hit OK. And then I'll even go back to um, image adjustments, replace color once again. Um, and then this style shoe will allow me, what I'll do is even I'll select this piece to all this green, this kind of yellow green tone, as well as this orange, and then see kind of what happens um, after I make a different selection here.
So then I got a couple different styles of, of the same model shoe. So like real world application, let's just say, um, typically when we were we would work on these um, catalogs, um, a client would have um, they would have a catalog, they would have a shoe type, but then they wouldn't have all the range of possibilities of shoe colors because it's really expensive to produce. So what they would do is take a picture of the shoes and then ask our color correcting team to um, change the colors uh, of the image in the catalog, release the catalog, and then um, fulfill the orders as they came. Um, so they would essentially create an infomercial of a shoe for somebody, and then they would um, then uh, decide uh, whether or not next season to go with those colors depending on how, um, how they sold or, or not, or just say, you know, that we're out of that color or something if it's not a seller at all. So that's kind of the real world application behind it. They weren't as drastic uh, or um, uh, um, obvious as these color changes are um, in this shoe, but um, those shoes were more casual shoes. So how um, is this 